All right, welcome back to the third and final part of this Google Basics series um, for ASB. We're gonna be talking and tackling calendars. Um, you probably already know how to use the basic function functions of Google Calendar. And I just wanna, I really just wanna stress that if you're not comfortable with Calendar yet, um, to really dig into being open to learning about calendars because it is how we run a lot of our things at ASB. Um, we really maximize the functionality of calendars to help us stay organized and efficient. So we are going to be opening our Google Calendar. So I just did it here um, in my ASB. I already have it open here and I have it into the week view and I'm actually back in May so you can see the different events that we have. So you will notice that you'll be adding your teaching schedule and any team meeting. So when it says ITSA team meeting, that's subject area team. So if you are a counselor, that will be your team meeting. If you're part of a teaching team, you'll have your meeting as well. And so everything really goes into our calendar, your duties, your classes, as well as other meetings, um, including office hours. The reason our calendars are so important is that the secretaries and division oh. leaders, everybody actually, we have access to everybody's calendar, um, to our colleagues' calendars as well, and we use it to plan meetings, to find common time, because uh, we do a lot at ASB, and it's just too difficult to send back and forth 15 different emails to find a time that is good enough to meet. So. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's get started on getting you organized. The first thing I want you to do is actually you use a skill that you learned in the last module or the last tutorial. Um, and let's go to shared team drives. I want you to find the all staff documents team drive. You should have access to that. And find the folder where it says calendars. In this folder is the links to get all of ASB calendars. So you're gonna open that document up. Here's what that document looks like, all right? We actually have to add all the different ASB calendars. You have to add all the different ASB calendars to your ASB Google Calendar. This is actually how we do this. So there's a list of links down here below. And as soon as you click on it, you'll see this icon add to your Google Calendar. Let's get started. So all staff calendars. We have a community calendar as well as an all staff calendar. The community calendar is so important. Um, our teachers, our students, and our parents have access to this calendar. It includes our holidays. It includes our six day schedule and it includes our all school events. It's in so important that you know the six day schedule and so we have to add the community calendar to make the six day calendar appear on yours. All staff calendar. This includes all of the teacher events that we have internally. Parents and students do not have access to that. But if we have an all school meeting, an all school PD, any all school staff events, that will appear on this calendar. Then we have some division calendars. If you are part of ECC, ES, MS, or HS, you will want to add that calendar there. What appears there are events specific to that division. So you can see how this kind of works as a layer. And that's how Google Calendar works best. It works by toggling on and off layers. I'm going to turn off the community calendar. Now at the very top, you'll see that I don't know the days anymore. Let me click that back on. And up here at the top, you'll see that my days appear again. Wow, oops, there. Now they're appearing, <laughs> I clicked it twice. Now they're appearing there on the top, so I know which day is which, okay? Wednesday is when we have our extended meetings. If I toggle off the all staff calendar, I don't see that meeting. If I toggle it on, I see it there again. Now let's navigate more into International Day. We see that holiday, okay? Now I'm gonna turn on or off the division calendar. So I have ECC, ES, HS, MS. You don't need all of them, but you do need the division that you're involved in. So if I turn on middle school, I will see all the middle school events that also happened that week. Okay. So what came on for middle school events, look up here in the top right, some collaboration and some events as well as staff birthdays. So it's really important that you have the all staff calendar, the community calendar, and then whatever, di whatever division you're part of. 
Let's go through adding this. If I need to add the community calendar, these are all links, I can just open this. And then on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see it says add Google Calendar. When you do that, not much happens, all right? So if I did that, I add the Google Calendar, it just looks like it takes me to my calendar. But on the left hand side, you should be able to see now availability of that calendar toggling on or off under my calendars. This calendar is already on my list, okay? So you can see that it's there. So please do that. You could pause and do it now for the community, all staff, and then your division cal calendar. It is imperative that you do this, um, as well as if you're part of middle school or high school, you will want to add the assessment calendars, okay? So usually it happens that halfway through the year, somebody tells me, how does everybody know when the 6 day schedule is? And it's because they missed this step. So please do add these calendars, take the time to do it now, okay? If you wanna pause the video, add these calendars, and then unpause and we can come back together, all right? So hopefully it took some time to do that. I'm gonna to go to my calendar and I'm just gonna be clicking on a few of these settings. Um, I can change my calendar to be by the day, the week, the month, the year, okay? I like the week when I'm during, during school, all right? I like to look at the month when I'm looking at things um, big picture. I usually do not show weekends. That just gives me more real estate on my page. And I'm gonna click on today, which takes me into this summer holiday. Now you'll see there's no six day schedule on my community calendar. I'm gonna navigate forward until I get into September. So let's go on this month to September 1st. And now I can see first day of class here, September 1st. I can also see new family orientation for new families on this community calendar. Um, if I started toggling on the different division calendars, I might also see additional events. I want to talk a little bit about the six day schedule. So you can see the six day schedule is already put in for us. The quarters usually end on a day six and so that they can start fresh on a day one and the holidays are in for us as well. Your schedule will rotate on a six day schedule. So one of the first things you'll have to do is add your schedule in. That is a task that we give all teachers. I'm gonna give you a little preview of how you do that. So if you are a middle school or high school teacher, you will simply use PowerSchool, which is where you take attendance and where you see your schedule, to download a file and then upload it. Now, from my ASB, you can navigate to the technology tutorials and you'll be asked to watch this one. Import your PowerSchool schedule, PS, into Google Calendars. This tutorial will be required to watch so you can upload your schedule, okay? After the first week of classes, we do do a check to make sure everybody's schedule's in because it's so important for students and for colleagues and um, division leaders to have everybody's schedule so we can start making meetings when we need to. If you are working in the ECC or if you're working in the elementary, it looks a little bit different. That is when you would use this six day calendar schedule link, I'm sorry, generator, calendar creator, to import your schedule. Now, don't do this on the first day. Make sure your schedule is solid, that you're not making changes before you import your schedule. Because no matter how you do it in PowerSchool or with this recurring events creator tool, it is not dynamic. It means that if something changes, it doesn't automatically change everything. So wait after the first week, make sure everything is set in your schedule, that things aren't going to change, and then start making sure that your schedule is imported. All right. There's also a tutorial of how to use this on our teacher's tech page. I found this in our PowerSchool section of PowerSchool Teachers. Okay. So you can see that there are a lot of tutorials available for you. Every time someone asks a question, I add that up here into this tutorials. Okay. So that is the explanation of the six day schedule and also how important it will be to add your schedule within the first couple of weeks of school. Now, we are going to practice how to make an event, okay? So usually when you make an event in Google Calendar, it's because you're making it with someone else and you're trying to coordinate. I'm going to pretend that I need to make a meeting with Joanna. So 
I have my calendar up already. My name is toggled. I can actually type in Joanna's name, meet with Joanna, and then I'll be able to see her schedule. Now, hers is one of the craziest schedules to try to make a meeting with. So if you want to make a meeting with Joanna, sometimes you have to look a week ahead. Let's say that I need to make a meeting with her for Thursday. I see that we both have time here. Now, my tasks are in green, my schedules, and then hers is in this red color. You can see it indicated here as well. So if I want to make a schedule with her at noon this day, if I just simply click there, it's going to give me a bubble where there's like a quick event creator here. Now, it's already added Joanna and myself to this invite. Great. It's put it for 12 to 12, 25. Well, actually, maybe I need it to be till 1240. I need about 40 minutes to talk to her about this. I could also add more guests here if I needed to. And if we were remote, I would add this Google Meet video conference link. What this does is it adds a link where we can meet virtually. However, we hope that we're all together at the start of the year, and maybe I wanna meet with her somewhere else. Here, where it says add room or location, is where we could actually add a room at ASB. Some rooms need to be checked out, and you'll be able to see some of these suggested rooms. Okay, if it has an M in front of it, it's in middle school. Okay, if I scroll down here, we have building A, which is the main building. Then we also have building B, which is the elementary building. And we have building M, which is the middle school building. A is the main building with high school. And then we have other as well, which are our outdoor spaces. So if you're PE or you're holding an event, you would have to add that place to reserve it, okay? However, if I'm meeting with Joanna, I'm just gonna meet with her in the TL office, which is M building. If it's your classroom, you can simply type your classroom's name in if you wanna meet with somebody. I'm gonna go back here. And I'm still in this quick view. I could open this to be a little bit bigger if I opened into more options. I'm gonna open that so you can see. So we have the event. I know that she's free, that I'm free. I've added the place where we're going to meet, which is going to be in the TL office room. Because it was a room, it also reserves it. All right, I wouldn't see this room available if it was already taken by someone else. So it's imperative that you also reserve the room. Um, if you're not reserving a room, you can just simply type in something there as well in the location field. Like maybe it is, if you do Starbucks or a popular place, it will come up there, but I might just say my office. Okay? It doesn't need to have a Google map attached. You could just say my office so that she knew where to meet. All right, I'm gonna go through a few more settings in here. Something that I like to do is make sure that I let people modify the event. Let's say that you, I'm meeting with you um, just to do a check-in for a new staff. I would add on here, hey, I'd love to meet with you to talk about this review, how do you feel about shared drives, email, and drive. And I might add that here in the description. We talk about, and I might make a list, shared drives, your schedule, and then I might even say, please add anything else you want. By letting you modify this, this event, you can then add to the description, okay? The other thing that is really important that we do is we always add or attach the documents we'll need for that meeting. If it's a student making a meeting with a teacher, adding the document that we're talking about, it's gonna save all of us time when we get to the meeting. If I am a SAL, a subject area leader, meeting with my subject area team, the SAT team, adding our agenda is gonna save us 10 minutes at the beginning. If I'm a division leader, and I'm holding a Wednesday afternoon meeting, putting that agenda on the calendar link, as well as any other things, documents or slides that need to go with it, is gonna save you from sending an extra email, okay? So I'm just gonna attach this ASB Tech Updates. And this is now perfect for Joanna and I, and we're gonna talk about Tech Updates for meeting at TL Room. And then I realized, ooh, I might need Jenny to come to this as well. So if I now type in Jenny's name, she's gonna be invited to this meeting. What I haven't thought about is Jenny's schedule. I'm not really sure if she's free at this time. So another button that is golden to know about is this find a time feature. Now, 
all three of our schedules are pulled up as well as that conference room. So it's not busy at that time. All right. So that's also another way you can do that is type in the guests you want and then do find a time. If Jenny was busy at this time, I could say, oh, I guess I have to do it at this time. And just simply clicking there changes these times. So let me see. Yep. We have added, we have gone over all the important things that are specific to ASB for this module. What might you go and revisit and practice now for your homework is creating an event with Anna Markadal. One of the best things that you can do in the beginning of the school year is to be in contact with Anna, making sure that everybody feels like, or make sure that you feel and you are able to ask your questions. So your homework for this module, for this tutorial, is to find Anna Markadal's schedule and make a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her. Be sure that she's invited, that she's free, and that you add uh, just in the description what you would like to talk to her about and let her modify the event, all right? So your homework is to make a one-on-one -on -one with Anna. If we were in person for this, you can put a location. Even if you don't know her office number, just write in Anna's office. If we are going to be virtual for this, I want you to add that Google meeting link. You might have to re-watch this tutorial in order to be successful at this task. But that is your homework today, is to make a meeting with Anna Markadal. All right, I hope you found this tutorial um, helpful.